we decided to uh, have uh, this session so that uh, you have an opportunity to ask uh, what is uh, important for you for uh, our next code stream. So I, in fact, only have uh, one slide uh, for this session. Really ask anything that uh, you uh, want uh, to answer, we want us to answer for you. But uh, th there are a few things uh, which please keep in mind. Uh, we are early, in early phase uh, and uh, not everything is set in stone uh, and it is, there are many decisions which are still to be made and even the decisions uh, uh, which uh, have already been made uh, and then uh, new circumstances may show up and uh, there is a chance that we, we will revisit them. And also even though I have uh, many colleagues here uh, I guess no need to introduce them, <laughs> but they can introduce themselves. Uh, uh, we may not be able to respond to uh, everything, so if it is the case uh, and we are not able to respond on spot, uh, please uh, send me an email, the address is uh, on uh, this uh, slide, and, uh, and uh, I will try to get back uh, to you as uh, soon as possible. So for a quick intro, uh, I'm Jiří Schrein uh, with uh, SUSE over 20 years in various roles and I'm uh, one of uh, the architects uh, overseeing the whole ALP uh, development. I think my colleagues can introduce themselves. Hello, my name is Michal Švec and I'm product manager at SUSE, working mainly on the SUSE Linux products, uh, SUSE Linux product family, uh, SUSE Enterprise products and BCI. Hey, ALP release manager, Pavel Nihotkin. Uh, communication between work groups. My name is Alexander Herzig. I'm also an ALP release manager and taking care of BCI um, before I've taken care of uh, SLI 15 SP2 and CASP before. My name is Anja and I am the boss of Gross, uh, except. <laughs> 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 so I've been uh, being a release manager myself for, uh, for a long time. Now I'm doing that, handing over. Yeah, I'm Stefan Weiberg. I'm project and release manager for SLI 15, SP4, and SP5. And I'm working on the work group, um, on the ALP work group for OS as a service and intelligent OS. Hey, I'm not really part of the steering committee as Yiri, but uh, I'm driver of the community work group. And our goal is currently to make sure that you can contribute, you know, that we enable you, that whatever we have, you can actually participate in. I think this is the end goal. We are also trying to communicate for the teams who do not have the public communication channels, uh, so we are trying to help where we can. Um, I guess my ask is just to be as public as possible, and this is what everybody expects. This is open by default. We build it in you know, public uh, build service. We want to make sure that we can improve on all the aspects. And I guess back to Yuri, right? Yeah. Um, well, Lubos, you, for you forgot to say that you, oh, yeah. this session was your idea. Uh, yeah, that was my, <laughs> it was my idea. Uh, so. Uh, just to tell you the background, I, I was always amazed uh, when I've seen the Fedora Steering Committee on the DEF CON where people could ask any questions. It was always constructive discussion, which is the ask, let's have a constructive dis discussion. If you see some challenges that we should actually address in all, you know, if you, if you are not sure about some technology decisions that may not have been communicated out, this is the time. We are having a great discussion, POC in four months, if I count correctly, October, right? So we should have proof of concept by that time. There is a limited time, and let's ask the right questions, make sure that we can address them quickly. Cool. And now, back to Yuri. And I will be the one running around the room with okay. the questions, so. Yeah. Okay. So, the stage is, the the stage okay. is now yours, so uh, feel free to raise your hand, uh, grab a microphone and ask. Anyone. I mean, this, they're here for you, and you know, I mean, yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah, Zach. Maybe to bring everybody on the same page, I think it would be a good idea to describe the ideas that are currently existing about the upcoming architecture and the integration. All right, let me start. So, uh, first of all, let me explain the different name. Different names come from the idea that we want to kind of uh, do something different, but not really, uh, we must do, have, uh, must do something different, but we want to encourage different ideas. So thinking outside of the box. So that's why we are not calling it SUSE anything, SUSE Enterprise something or 
or so, but uh, Adaptive Buildings platform really to see what people come up with, what we can do without uh, looking backwards. So that's why we call it uh, differently. At the end, it will be Linux operating system, Linux operating system environment. Uh, so uh, pretty much what we use today, but some of the underlying concepts might be different. One of the biggest changes is the separation between the host and the workload parts. So the host will be somewhat independent from, from the workloads in a way that uh, you can have different components uh, in, in the workloads, like different containers, different VMs, and those can live on different life cycles. So we have customers and users in community who want to like, have a very static part on the host because they want to maintain the same hardware for many years and they need different fresh applications using different like new Python releases uh, on top of it and also vice versa. So we have uh, customers and users who are changing hardware often and they want to have uh, this bottom layer up to date and then they have, uh, they have applications which have been running for years and years and they can't touch them for whatever reasons like certifications and so on. So this is one of the concepts. And uh, the other concept, the other ideas floating in the air are like changing components within these two, two layers in a way that uh, it's way more flexible what we can provide. So different users, customers, partners have needs for, for different versions of specific ecosystems like Python, Ruby releases and stuff like that. That's the other thing what we want to make easier to do so that we are not bound to this one version which is like hardwired into the operating system right now. So I would say that's the key ideas, Axel. Maybe, maybe related. Uh, so you hear the concepts. Uh, is it okay if I talk? Yeah. Uh, and I've actually asked some people, did you get hands on it already? And you know, like at what, right? I believe the easiest way, if you are interested in ALP, and since 15.5, we actually expect will be the last release, and I would like every single one of you to focus on the, you know, ALP, I believe that the best start that you can do now is grab what we have, which is this uh, Richard's work. Uh, we have MicroS, imagine it would be a rolling release, we would freeze it in the time, you know, what you don't like about it right now, what are the features that we should add? We have four months for it, you know, just, just make sure that you get your hands on so you're not surprised after. Have a look at MicroS desktop. If it would be flat pack based, just like Richard designed it, wouldn't be rolling release. You would freeze it maybe with some different life cycles. You know, how does it work for you? Be loud. You know, raise your, uh, raise your requirements on the mailing list. This is the best what we have right now. I doubt that we can de develop something parallel, completely different in four months for POC. And just, you know, make sure that you are okay with what we are having. That's my only ask. I feel Richard has the same opinion, right? Yeah. Cool. So we have something, we have technically proof of concept, let's make it even better. And that's actually a very good point, like uh, the options are wide open, so we are really looking for feedback and uh, suggestions what to do. So obviously we can't do everything, and uh, we need to pick some choices, but uh, I would, as Lubos said, encourage everyone to reach out and to like, collaborate on this. So you guys are saying that the, uh, the development of ALP is public and available. And I, you mentioned the Devil Leo and the Devil ALP uh, OBS projects. Do those also include um, the product definitions, the image build descriptions, and, and installer configurations and stuff like that so that you know, people like myself or whoever could maybe do some tweaks, make some experiments to kind of see how things could be twisted around a little bit for this proof of concept work. <laughs> Can you ask again? Maybe I see it is. No, I'm not sure I got the, your question. Uh, uh, about, this, about this packaging yeah. stuff. I would, I would assume that uh, for the base system, it really remains, uh, remains uh, the same. Uh, there is not real reason to do a dramatic changes. Uh, after all, that's a small base, base system similar to micro OS. Uh, for the additions of uh, the workloads, uh, 
at this point of time, I don't think uh, we can really say much. So I, I think I'll just try and translate for Neil here. Um, I think the question really was, is, are things like the zero zero product package groups, the Kiwi definitions, the yeah, all of all of the patterns, all of that kind of stuff for ALP also going to be done in OBS? I, so so far, we did not uh, really look into this and uh, see how we will build uh, the images. Uh, it is uh, on the on the agenda uh, until now. We are still using uh, KB4, uh, which you can also see in the images uh, building in uh, Devil Colon Leo, uh, in Build Open Source Org. Uh, we are still using the same way to generate the package lists uh, for uh, the pool channel, which is uh, being generated there. This is one of one of the things uh, which still can uh, change in uh, the coming months. Obviously, the question is: First, we need to we need to find out uh, what are uh, the better options uh, to go than uh, sticking with our current tools. Okay. Any other questions that we? Thank you. Yeah, my name is Martin Winder. I'm uh, more looking on this from the application side. I'm, let me say, more an end user. So um, let me say, how do you want to avoid that in the end um, the user has the, um, uh, the same um, experience like you have now with the Snap, Firefox, and Ubuntu, that it needs three times as long to start up because it's in a container, that it can no longer interact with KeyPass because the interfaces are down, or another experience I had, I think, I think that was with an app image, that um, the, the, the application close buttons were no longer on the right side, but on the left top, and looking like um, iOS, because the one who made the uh, container or the, the app image uh, has just chosen that. That means, how do you... Um, um, yeah, try to keep this um, homogeneous um, world of applications you currently have, in which I think are very valuable, very valuable, and uh, for for an end user, um, yeah, experience. So preserving look and feel, right? That's what I'm hearing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's actually. I think. I think. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it 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 really it really is a very very good question. Uh, and uh, yeah, nobody has the answer. <laughs> Same here. Well, uh, I mean, f for a desktop use case, uh, which is uh, what you probably care about, uh, the backwards compatibility or the, the focus on be uh, being uh, stable as much as possible is not that strong as uh, for uh, running real server workloads for a decade or two. And uh, I would expect uh, that uh, most of the desktop, the desktop uh, set of uh, packages, or be it uh, co container images, uh, user will try to keep uh, the most up to date. But I mean, currently you can uh, grab uh, uh, one one version, new recent version of uh, one application, and uh, completely outdated version of uh, another one, and uh, even though the same. Same version would look similar. They look different. They will look completely different, like uh, with the, the buttons moving uh, any direction or OK cancel buttons in the different order. I don't really think that you can prevent it completely, but uh, well, I mean, Nature has a solution. Yeah. I. I so the, the, de the desk application well, isolation of desktop applications is different from from isolation of. of server applications. You know, there's, there's a whole bunch of extra weird stuff on desktop. And if we look at the ecosystem that you've got now, you've got those three options. You mentioned two of them, app image, snap, and the third one being flat back. You know, app image basically tries to address the problem by pretending it doesn't exist. So it's useless. You know, it, 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 it just amplifies all of these problems. And, you know, if you're lucky enough for it works and you're running the right version of GDBC on your system, it might start, but no, just my view, forget about app image entirely. Snap tries to address the issue, but unfortunately, 
does it in a very Ubuntu canonical centric way. You know, also like, you know, I can't see how we could possibly even look at delivering snaps because the snap store is proprietary. So it's like how, you know, if we start building our own snaps, are we gonna ask Ubuntu to ship? No, I, I don't see that working. Um, so Flatpak I think is the only one that you know, even even though it's not perfect, it's all to be honest, it's all I use for my applications now. But you know, it has its odd issues. It has answers or potential answers for all those issues you raised. You know, like the like sort of being able to integrate with KeyPass. You know, there's portals. There's an API for that. If the API doesn't extend enough yet, it can be extended. In terms of keeping things consistent, you know, it has this concept of runtimes. So. All of the applications from one version of GNOME or the applications from one version of KDE are all going to be using the same shared libraries, the same themes, they're all going to look roughly the same. So I think that's probably the way we'll go down. That's what we have in the MicroS desktop, so you can download that and look that way. We've kind of thrown everything in with Flatpak and Flathub there. Um, yeah, and I think, I think that's probably the best way going forward with that, which also fits everything that Yoshi said, because most of the time you've got very up-to-date applications in there. Okay, other questions? Questions, questions, looking around. Yeah, no, okay. Excuse me, Your Honor. Yeah. My name's Don Curtis. Um, I have a question, well, really two questions addressing what Axel was saying. The, from my view, the problem seems to be the Python and Ruby versions. We're running into a dead end. Meaning, are other distributions also affected by this situation? And if they are, do we know how they are going to be dealing with it? Can I maybe take this one? If you will well, be on at least regarding Python, we are having the discussions how to resolve it uh, both for ALP and also for, for SLI 15 because it already we suffer from it as we have heard already earlier today. So there are multiple solutions what we can do. The solution probably is to just ship multiple Python releases in parallel, not perhaps in the complete uh, scale as we do it uh, today with 3.6, but within, with their subset and see whether it's good enough for these cases where the application uh, needs a specific Python version in order to work at all. And uh, I'm afraid that's the only solution going forward because as the Python ecosystem moves, the application move, applications move as well, and each needs, uh, each application might need a different Python version. So we probably need to come up, well, not probably, we need to come up with a solution how to supply these Perl uh, Python versions in order to satisfy the requirements. And the same might apply, well, now I don't see anything. <laughs> The same might apply to, to other ecosystems like Ruby, maybe. On the other hand, I personally haven't like, uh, like seen a lot of demand for, for Ruby because it seems to be going less and less popular. But yeah, we are, we are aware of a, of a problem. It's not an easy one to solve. And, uh, oh, and the other thing is that the system Python is something what likely might need to stay because since the, the bulk of the like, core of the operating system is compiled against the system Python, it would be very tricky to, to change it. So the solution will most likely look like having a system Python again. It should be minimal like core available to the like, core of the operating system to the host part, likely. And we will have different repositories with different newer Python, Python releases on top of it. And I would not only say different repositories. We will provide uh, the different. We can provide different different versions of Python as uh, the container images, uh, which uh, the workloads can be based on. Absolutely, thanks. That's a good point. So one of the key points of ALP is containerization. So we want to provide containers which are ready to use in all these scenarios. So Python, but also Ruby and others. And as Michal mentioned, uh, I don't uh, foresee that uh, we would be able to have a system the base system without the system version of Python because uh, there is uh, too much stuff which uh, is actually written in Python. Uh, speaking of uh, Ruby uh, with uh, the latest service pack of SLI 15 and also the OpenSUSE Libre release, if 
you, if you don't want to get uh, Yast installed as part of uh, the distribution, you can be completely without Ruby. There seems to be another question. Yeah, yeah but wait a minute. Um, my main question is, are other distributions, Red Hat, everybody else, also affected by this issue? And if they are affected by the issue, do we know how they are dealing with this issue? So, for instance, uh, yeah, other, others are obviously affected as well, especially with the death of Python 3.6, it became very apparent because a lot of projects have moved away from, from Python 3.6 or are moving away. And uh, they have different means how to do that. Uh, for instance, I know Reddit has their app streams, which are somewhat similar to what I've described, like parallel uh, repositories, having parallel releases, uh, and uh, within a very like small scope. So it's, it's not by far those uh, uh, thousands of packages we have in factory. It's a very limited scope and uh, limited life cycle. So it's how we solve it. Uh, I am the Python maintainer, so it's all my fault. <laughs> and uh, so two, uh, two comments. Other distributions deal with it poorly. Basically, uh, they made a copy of uh, packages and they have to maintain Python 3.4 setup tools, Python 3.5 setup tools and uh, stuff like that, which is uh, just horrible and doesn't scale at all. Uh, the second, um, I would refer to my yesterday's presentation, which was exactly about this uh, topic. So more details there. And that's it, basically. So Matthias is the one who is fixing it for SLE 15 and ALP. So okay. Thank you. And I'll, since this question was actually about other distributions, I can at least <laughs> say a little bit about how the Red Hat Fedora ecosystem does this, since I'm involved in quite a bit there. Um, as it was mentioned a little bit earlier about the application streams, uh, the, the concept of Fedora modularity is that you create uh, descriptions of build chains that you define all the components that you want to lifecycle together and you provide them with um, metadata that describes the supportability scope of these components that are available. And they can be as large or small in scope as you want. Um, Red Hat for Red Hat Enterprise Linux tends to make these module chains fairly small. Um, the equivalent module chains that exist in Fedora are considerably bigger because all the packages are available to, to be built against these build chains. Um, the, the, the crux of the difference between how it works in uh, Fedora versus OpenSUSE with this is by default, they are not parallel installable in Fedora, but in OpenSUSE they are which simplifies a lot of the deployment characteristics and makes it indirectly easier to push people to containers because then you don't have like four or five um, PHPs running on the same system because that's, n please don't. <laughs> so um, that, that's really the, the, the conceptual difference. Uh, and then of course all the other bits are mostly the same, doing lots of uh, container -y stuff, Kubernetes -y stuff, Flatpak -y stuff, whatever. Maybe one thing to add is that I feel a lot of what we are talking about is actually about deployments of these applications. We also need to be thinking about how are people developing them locally and if whatever we do, you know, scales there as well. I, I know it's easy to kind of say, well, you know, you have that version in container, but like, do you actually really want to initiate development of your application in the container or do you start locally? You want to have it, you know, and then once you feel like this is what I want, like then you actually start thinking about deployment. I feel we forget about the first part. We maybe expect that people are using different platforms to develop, but you know, users are using also our platforms and that should just not be forgotten. Yeah, I see notes from Richard. I see notes from uh, Neil. So I hope this is, yeah, this is fair point. Uh, hello, my name is Dennis. Um, first, big kudos to the Python maintainer. Thank you. <laughs> Matje Zeppel, by the way, if you don't know him. <laughs> um, <laughs> then for... Yeah, there's one more, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, big kudos to all the Python maintainers. I like Python very much. Um, the thing is for the packaging, we there it would be a third approach, which is not terribly, that's just a comment, not terribly um, popular 
enabling having multiple versions of every package on the system, like MixOS thinks about that. So we, we do not need to do Flatpak, though I like Flatpak, I use him also, and they have additional value, but um, sometimes I a little bit worry also about the spreading, and this would be also something we could think about, but this is, would be a huge undertaking, to be honest. And I don't know if it's in the long term very good because you have to, to maintain, because for every package you have to see, okay, is we have a CVE for that package, does it uh, affect the system? But we could think about this. Um, my question is, if we have a base where we say, okay, we run everything in containers, I am a big fan of cubes, and if, would it be possible perhaps that we think also have supporting the system that we, it's not only containers, that our base also enables having different VMs as with app VMs and uh, traffic VMs and stuff like this, that ALP could also, is, would it be possible to enrich ALP in the way that yeah. this is also possible with that? Because having the same security guarantees as, as Cubes, which is very famous, would be a good thing, but again, that depends on the effort behind that. Uh, let, let me take this one. Uh, we, we want to focus on having uh, the applications or workloads running containerized, but this does not mean that uh, it uh, would uh, be the only supported way. Uh, obviously, VMs are uh, the first one uh, that's coming to the game, uh, so we expect that you would be able to run uh, whatever you are running uh, today in, in the virtual machine uh, on top of ALP. And uh, we are aware that not everything or not every customer will be willing uh, to put, uh, or willing or able to put uh, his workload to the container immediately, which means uh, we will need uh, to provide uh, the base system optionally, uh, to allow th th that on the base system uh, you will optionally install much more stuff uh, than we would like to see. At this point of time, I cannot tell you how much it actually or what uh, we will support, but obviously it will mean that uh, now you have to stick with the system version of the Python, and uh, you lose a lot of the flexibility which uh, decoupling of uh, your uh, application's uh, environment from the base system gives you. Does this help? <laughs> it's, it's an unexpected. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maki wants to maybe provide a feedback. Can you, can you get Mike? You should be with us, man. Like, you should have joined us here. This is not the official announcement, but uh, I think, uh, uh, no, I mean it. Uh, we are still thinking about how to do it, but uh, it's most likely that uh, it will look something like what is currently in a factory, meaning, or a tumbleweed, meaning that Currently now in Tumbleweed you have a parallel installable uh, Python 3.8, Python 3.9, Python 3.10 packages. So it will be probably something like that. We have the technology, so why not use it? Uh, second one, um, there is a lot of about containers. Containers are awesome thing, I love them. But it is not the answer to the question. Uh, containers are only how to bind existing packages to some group which is used for some purpose. It is awesome, but you have to fill those containers with something, and that something has to come from somewhere. So that's the, that, and that's the real problem. And uh, the last one is, yes, we are hiring, so... <laughs> File on a job to set CZ. That's one of the problems too, uh, because it's just not sustainable. Thank you, Matthew. Also, I'm not sure if I can say it, but I'm really happy that I see Suze investing more into packaging team. We will have more maintainers. You know, you've heard there will be problems. So this is great news. I hope that we can tackle the problem with more resources. More related questions, if you are on this topic. Question from here. Yeah, please. Um, here. Hello. Ah, yeah. 
So the way I see this is that we, 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 we're, we're going to have some kind of micro OS, even more minimal, and then yeah. we're just going to keep the base OS and we're m moving everything to containers. So BCI is going to play a, an important role here. What about the, the, all the tools around transactional server like Reboot Manager and Health Checker? Are we going to keep it? Same as micro OS or? Um, Can you repeat it's the not last decided sentence? Yes, okay. I'm not sure I got the question. Yeah, I mean, Reboot Manager and things like this, I think we're going to just I, stay. I would assume that uh, this technology, which is part of uh, micro OS, uh, will be uh, used uh, in, uh, in, the, in the ALP uh, release. Okay. And uh, yeah, of course, Dennis. So for those who don't know me, I'm Thorsten Kuckuck. I'm the distinguished engineer and the architect of micro OS. So you can see ALP as micro OS, further stripped down and more separated in the user land. So all the things like the boot manager, oh, heel yeah. checker. Marcy, uh, could you not stand in front of the speaker? It would be awesome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Could everybody move to the stage? <laughs> <laughs> so, see, this is a team effort. <laughs> okay. So, you could see ALP as micro as what we always plan to do for it, but had never the resources. And now we have the resources and get them. So, we will strip down the dependencies of micro as even further more. So, which means all this thingy we get from Tumbleweed or see the requirements we can drop. And then we will have only the core host OS. And this includes, of course, the main functionality of micro OS. So transactional update, the boot manager, heal checker, ignition, combustion. Maybe we have to replace it with something better, more functional wise, or we don't know. So for example, for heal checker, we often hear from others, can we not work together? We are open to this. And if there is coming up something better, we will replace it, but the functionality of this will stay because this is the core. And then yeah. all the applications should run containerized, M must not be OCI containers, could be flatbacks or the system D, N spawn, whatever you have in mind, so that they are separated from the host OS, and that solves a lot of, of the dependencies problems. For example, Python in the base system, we don't need Python in the base system, firewall, everything which needs Python today is containerizable. I have prototypes for it. So putting more and more into real OCI containers or like, like NSPAN containers in the system, however you want to call it, allows us to solve a lot of problems. So if firewall is coming with its own Python version stripped down to the needs of the firewall daemon, then we don't have a hard dependency to a fixed Python version anymore and can much easier update the Python version to the need of the end users. Okay, another question I have is about public cloud. Uh, are we thinking about creating images for public cloud? I cannot imagine not doing that. Yeah, we have already some images for Silly Micro, so I, I guess it would make sense also to, to move to that direction as well. So since public cloud images are standard available, what we do today already, we will just carry on and we will create one once again. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from the... I see. By the way, uh, There'll be a group photo at 12.30 outside. Have, uh, yeah, I also, as well, yeah. But there is a question, right, in the audience. I have a question. Uh, is, the, is the problem with the versions of the software not a hen and uh, chicken egg problem? I mean, the problem is that they move forward very fast. And wouldn't it be better to also convince them to have LTES versions? So then you can pin on that LTS version, then you don't have that problem. Uh, can you repeat a question? Okay. Uh, it was maybe, maybe a little bit louder. Okay. Um, is the problem uh, not a hand uh, egg problem, that the uh, releases of uh, Python and everything 
uh, moving to forward too fast. And then it wouldn't be better to have an LTS version to convince them to have an LTS version. I mean, other distros have exactly the same problem. By, uh, Debian has the same problem with uh, PHP and also with Python, for instance. But that's exactly the problem is that we are both too slow and too fast. For some applications, we are too fast. For some applications, we are too slow. That's like, uh, there is no, not easy solution. And we want to have uh, Tumbleweed fast because that's what developers want. Developers uh, will switch to a, another distribution if we are uh, too old. On the other hand, and you see the problem. It's, uh, uh, the problem is uh, all distributions are fighting with this problem, and I'm not sure whether there is some good solution for it. We are all kind of muddling through. So inevitably, we will need to come up with some kind of a compromise because uh, it's not possible to support all releases in parallel for like 15 years. So we need to pick a reasonable subset which will satisfy most of the requirements. And I'm sure we will have some kind of a long-term support versions, releases, and what we need to see. Yeah, uh, so from my point of view, uh, as the um, idea for it also going towards influencing the open source development projects, I think this is kind of impossible. So software is speeding up. Um, software development is speeding up. Python has chosen the path of non-compatibility, and we are not able to change that. So we, are, we won't be the persons to able to change Ruby or Python to be slower. That's uh, just not working. OK, so there's one last question that can be asked, and then we're going to ah, cut it. I had also questions. Okay. Cut it. So. Does anyone have that one last question? Axel, maybe. Axel. Yeah, it's me again, sorry. Um, it's not, not really a question, more a recommendation or a remark. I think you mentioned something already, Lubers. So if we're going now the containerized way, that means all the applications that now are pretty packaged in, in OBS need to transform somehow into a separate container which needs to speak to, to, to the container next to it, for example, a database or whatever. Um, have you already thought about some migration tools or some support for the current packages uh, to enable this transition? So this is a good point. That's the kind of uh, what we are seeing uh, when people are containerizing their workloads. There are some tools uh, we don't have much at the moment. I'm pretty sure that this is something what we will need to look into. So this is a good point. Uh, we don't have anything at hand. I'm not aware of any specific plans or what can be done because to a large extent it, depend it depends on the application itself. So if you have a package or application, it depends how the application actually behaves, whether it's possible to containerize it right away or whether you need to re-architecture it completely. But uh, that's a good topic. So. I think we will need to address it. I think we have to define set two things. One, I have already MariaDB, for example, running with a database and want to containerize it. So all I need to do is configure the container and point him to the local copy of the old MariaDB database. Then you start the container, stop your local MariaDB or the other way around, and then it will continue to work. That's what I, for example, did with my servers. If it's about containerizing the applications world. If you look at Docker Hub, so upstream projects like Nginx, Apache, MariaDB, FirewallD, and others provide all everything to containerize application already today. We just need to do it and uh, use the code. So that is something then where packagers need to learn how containers work and how to use the upstream work and include them in Tumbleweed. So maybe that is something for experts who can give tutorials, workshops, whatever at the next open source conference for packagers how to containerize the workload. By the way, uh, before we wrap up, uh, as we have seen, we do not have like all the answers to all the questions. So this is really a team effort. So even once this is done, I would encourage everybody to join this virtual stage and just continue working on this uh, as, a, as a big team. But thank you for your questions. All right, thanks for the panel. I have one ask, like one final ask. That's not a question. It's actually, it's okay. related. So uh, 
There is tomorrow a talk about how the communication with our work groups, you know, many of us are actually drivers or part of the work groups should actually work with public. You know, we want to establish feedback loops so people can talk to them, they see what's happening, you can be on track with what technologies were chosen. And uh, as mentioned, I work in the uh, Alp community work group. And I'm really thinking, based on what I see, that we should make it a workshop and talk to people what is it they want rather than what we think that you want. Would you agree? And would you attend the workshop? Okay, then we will make it a workshop. I feel like that would be way more beneficial. Thank you. Cool. I think it's tomorrow. We, yeah. we get it. Okay, cool. Cut it off. Cut it off. So, thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you. Next up, we'll be having a lightning talks, and then um, we'll have lunch.